guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will look at diffuse the bomb problem which is from lead code number 1652 and we will be looking at the optimal solution let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you have a bomb to diffuse and your time is running out your informer will provide you with a circular array code of length n and a key k to decrypt the code you must replace every number all the numbers are replaced simultaneously if k is greater than 0 then replace the ith number with the sum of the next k numbers if k is less than 0 replace the ith number with the sum of the previous k numbers and if k is equals to 0 then you replace the ith number with 0 as code is circular the next element of code at n minus 1 is code at 0 and the previous element of code at 0 is code at n minus 1 given the circular array code and an integer k return the decrypted code to diffuse the bomb now let's look at the constraint before we actually look at the solution now in this case our n value is ranging from 1 to 100 and the k value is from minus n to n so even if you write an nk algorithm you will be encountering 200 times 100 operations which will be around 2 into 10 to the power of 4 so it will easily pass even if you do the br brute force technique in this case now let's look at an example for better understanding let's say that our given array is 1523 and our k value is equals to 3 our goal is to decrypt the given array in such a way that if k greater than 0 then the resultant value at index i will be the sum of all the values from i plus 1 to i plus k if the k is less than 0 then the same uh, resultant at i will be array at i minus 1 to array at i minus k and if k is 0 then the, all the elements of the result array will be equals to 0 and we have to assume that the array is circular right now if we try to do this then let's say these are indices 0 1 2 3 for the first index the resultant array here will be equals to since the k is greater than 0 therefore the first index will have the sum from just the next index and till the kth index that means it will start at uh, whatever index i is here that means i is equals to 0 it will start from i plus 1 and go till i plus k the k value being 3 it will start at 1 and go till 3 we will be adding all these values 5 plus 2 plus 3 which will be 10 and writing here write 5 plus 2 7 7 plus 3 10 similarly i will be repeating for the index number 1 here if the i pointer is at index 1 then we will be adding all the values from index 2 to index 4 but here you do not have index 4 so we will be cycling back and going to index 0 right so we have to find the sum from 2 to 4 that means the index of sum 2 3 and 0 which will be 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 1 6 so the result at 1 will be 6 again if the i pointer is pointing to index 2 we will be adding this 3 plus 1 plus 5 that will be 9 okay and if the index is at the index 3 then we will be adding 1 plus 5 plus 2 which will be 8 right so this will be our resultant array this is when k is positive if let's say k was negative like what if my k was equals to k equals to minus 3 then what should i have done then given your array 1 5 2 3 if you want to create your uh, resultant array and if i'm starting at this index i equals to 0 then i will build the resultant array with a sum the first sum will be equals to uh, whatever is the index i you go to the left of it from minus 1 you have to go till minus 3 okay but then this minus 1 index is not present so we will be cycling back to this 3 and again moving back so that means from minus 1 to minus 3 means from this index 3 to index 1 right so we will be adding these values 3 plus 2 5 5 plus 5 which is 10 okay and again i will be going to this index 1 and uh, in this case i'll be again moving to the left hand side uh, adding the value at 0 1 plus 3 which is 4 and plus uh, 2 which is 6 so like this we will uh, continuously build up our result right for k uh, which is negative we will be adding the left hand side values in this case if k was 0 then the resultant array would have been four zeros so i hope uh, this approach is clear this is the brute force approach and since the n value is pretty less it is just 100 and the k value only ranges from minus 100 to 100 that means uh, we know that the total operations will be two times of 10 to the power of 4 which is very very less than 10 to the power of 8 definitely it is going to run within one second and it will pass but this is not the optimal solution let's uh, try to build up the op optimal solution in this case uh, we will be trying to solve it with the range sum query problem but how is this problem related to that problem in this case let's say that uh, our given array is 15234 
and our k value is 3 now let's say if my i was here then what i want to find in the result at 1 that means the result at i is from i plus 1th index add all the values from i plus 1th index till the i plus kth index in this case from i plus 1 to i plus 3 add all these values so one process to add all these adjacent values is to iterate over all the items and another approach to do that is if we have calculated the prefix sum that means the cumulative sum then i can find out the prefix sum at 4 and subtract the prefix sum at 2 minus 1 because what will be the prefix sum at 4 the cumulative sum it will be the uh, addition of all the values right from the beginning till index 4 and if you subtract the prefix sum at 1 from it then what you get is the difference amount right so if you know the entire sum till index 4 which is let's say 15 then if you subtract the entire sum till 1 from the entire sum till uh, 4 then you will get whatever is left over in between right so if you want to get the range sum from an index i to j then what you need to do is you need to calculate the prefix sum and you have to say prefix sum at j minus prefix sum at i minus 1 considering that i is not 0 right otherwise uh, if i is 0 then you have to just write prefix sum at j because whatever is the prefix sum storing this will store the entire sum right from the beginning index that that means index number 0 right so this is how if you have pre-computed the entire prefix sum array then you can get the range sum in just o1 time and since I will be finding the range sum for each of the queries one by one and so each of the query can now be solved in order of one time therefore the time complexity will just reduce to order of n having done pre-processing of order of n for finding the prefix sum array so I hope this technique is clear right but in this case it has another caveat to it it says that the array will be circular right so you need to take care of that I mean how will you handle the circular case one way to handle is uh, use the modern operator but I generally do not prefer using modern too much so what I will do is I will create a prefix sum array but not of n size but I will be creating of 2n size how can I create for 2n size I will assume that 1 5 2 3 4 are present two times like what if I tell you to imagine that 1 5 2 3 4 was the initial array and then I will append another 1 5 2 3 4 I will not be actually appending it but then I'm just telling you to imagine this if you imagine this and the indices are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then you know that the number of items is equals to 2n where n was the initial size of the array now if you find the prefix sum you iterate from left to right and keep on adding these values 1 6 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 3 11 11 plus 4 15 15 plus 1 16 16 plus 5 21 21 plus 2 23 then 26 and then 30 now these are the prefix sum values which I have got okay after having calculated this now if I want to even implement something circular I don't have to care about the modern okay so this is another way to get around the circular property that you append two arrays one after another so you don't have to go in the circular way now in this case let's say that for this index i and for value k i want to find out the decrypted value here then i want to go from index 4 to 5 and 6 right so since 5 and 6 are not present this 5 should have been at index 0 and 6 have been at index 1 but in the prefix sum array since we have appended two arrays side by side therefore we do not need to take care of this mod operation what i will do is since i know that i want to calculate the decrypted value at 3 so the prefix sum at whatever value i want to create that means at i will be equals to prefix sum at i plus k minus the prefix sum at i if i do this then what i mean by this uh, is you just calculate the prefix sum from i to i plus k that means till 6 right from the beginning and you subtract the sum right from the beginning till the ith index then you get the sum in between so we do not need to take care of the mod operation here so let's say that we wanted to calculate the result for index 3 so that will be equals to 3 plus 3 3 plus k means you you go to the sum 6 find out the sum from the 0th index to 6 and find out the sum from the 0th index to 3 that will be 21 already pre-calculated and 11 so you subtract them 
and this will be equals to 10. Now if you go and find it out, it is 4 plus 1 5, 5 plus 5 10. So this is correct. So this is how we can calculate the appended prefix array of size 2n and we can take care of the property of the circular array without having to use the mod operation, right? So whenever there is a positive value of k, that means we already know from the constraint that k will be within the range of n. So we can safely calculate our iterator from i equals to 0 to i equals to uh, 4, which is from 0 to n minus 1. And whenever the k value is positive, I will be iterating from 0 to k. But let's say if the k value is negative, minus 3, then I will always be starting to iterate from index number 5 and going till the index, uh, I mean the last index and always looking at the left hand side sum. Why is that? Because uh, we don't want to take care of the mod operations, right? I'll show you in the dry run why this is true because even if uh, you wanted to calculate the left sum, let's say for this index 1, you wanted to calculate if k was equals to minus 3, then what will be the resultant value, right? So let's say you wanted to calculate the result at index 1 where k value was equals to 3. So in that case, your sum must be 1 plus uh, 4 plus 3. That means it should be 8, right? The answer must be 8 for this index. If you go to the left hand side, then it will be index 0, index minus 1 and index minus 2. Now, since this is a circular array, the minus 1 will lead to index 4 and the minus 2 should lead to index 3, right? But since I don't want to use this mod operations uh, anymore, so what I will do is, I have appended the array two times, right? So this is one time and this is the second time. So if I start at this 5, then this will be equivalent to saying that this is index 0 and this was also index 0. So this is index 1. Now in this case, if I want to find out the range sum of the previous three items, then it will be equals to uh, whatever is the prefix sum till the previous point. That means the result at i will be equals to the prefix sum at i minus 1. That means uh, at this point, this is the sum right from the beginning uh, to index 5 minus the prefix sum at i minus k minus 1, right? So what does that mean? Uh, 6 minus k minus 1. That means 6 minus uh, 3 minus 1. That means it will be 2. So you subtract the sum right from the beginning to 5 and from beginning to 2. So you get the sum in the middle. And what are these indices? If you carefully imagine, then this 4 is actually the fourth number, the prefix sum from the beginning to 4. And this 3 is the prefix sum right from the beginning to 3, right? So if you just subtract these values, then you get the sum of these three items, right? Which is index number 3, index number 4, and index number 5, which is index number 0 itself. And that is what I want. So I want you to do a dry run about this, right? And then you will definitely find the answer to be 16 minus 8, which is equals to 8, 16 minus 8. So having known this technique, let's look at the optimal solution. We already know that if k is greater than 0, then I will be finding our uh, result at i will be a uh, prefix sum at i plus k minus prefix sum at i, which I already explained. And the result at i, if the k value less than a 0 will be prefix sum at i minus 1 minus prefix sum at i minus k minus 1. So let's say that uh, our k value is equals to 3 and this is our given array. So I have pre-calculated the prefix sum, which will be of size 2 times n. Now uh, I will be building my resultant array. I'll be iterating for each of the item one by one. And I will be iterating at 10 times from 0 to 4. So since my k value is equals to 3 and this index is 0. So I will be finding whatever is the sum. Uh, I will be subtracting 0 plus 3. That means this 3, whatever is the value 11 minus whatever is the value is at 0. That means 1. So 11 minus 1 is 10. I'll write 10 at index 0. And I'll just move on. For this index 1, I will be calculating what is the prefix sum at 1 plus 3. That means the prefix sum at 4, 15. And the prefix sum at 1, that is 6, just subtract it and get a 9 for index 1. Similarly, I will repeat this index. Uh, for index 2, I will be getting the prefix sum at 2 plus 3. That means at index 5, minus the prefix sum at 2, that means 8. So I will be getting a sum equals to 8 for this index 2. Again, I will be repeating and uh, repeating for this index 3. I will be getting the prefix sum at 3 plus 3, which is 6. And the prefix sum at 3, just subtract it to get the sum in the middle, 21 minus 11. So this becomes 10 for index 3. And similarly for index 4, I'll go to 4 plus 3, which is 7. And uh, subtract the prefix sum at 4, which will make it 23 minus 15, which is 8. And write it here for index 4. So I hope you understood the technique of calculating this resultant array. 
Now, if we want to calculate the same for k equals to minus 3, then we will again uh, build the solution for the resultant array. But this time, we will not be starting at index 0, but we will be starting at index 0 plus n, where n value here is 5. So I'll be starting at this index 5 because I always need to look at the left hand side. So there should be some elements on the left hand side, right? And you know that the k value will always be less than n if we within the range of n. So you, you will never find that uh, you are going out of bound on the left hand side. So it is safe to start at this 5. This 5 is equivalent to starting at 0 only, right? Now, if you want to uh, find out the previous three sums, that means at index minus 1, at index minus 2, at index minus 3, this is equivalent to saying minus 1 would be index 4, minus 2 would be index 3, and minus 3 would be index 2 because the k value is 3, right? So we are looking on the left hand side. So this is equals to saying that what is the prefix sum right from the beginning till the previous index, which is 4, and subtract the prefix sum right from the beginning till index 1 so that you get the sum in between, which is for the three items so you you do 15 minus 6 that means prefix sum at i minus 1 subtracted with the prefix sum at i minus k minus 1 so that will give you 15 minus 6 a value 9 so this is for index 0 if you check it out 4 plus 3 7 plus 2 9 okay now i should go to the next index so i will be going to 6 and similarly this time you will be sliding this to the right hand side and you will subtract this 8 from 16 and so the value will be 8 now we will calculate for the next index that means for this index number 2 so i want to get the sum of these three items so subtract this 11 from 21 and you will be getting in uh, value 10 okay for index number 2 and similarly when you go uh, to the right hand side for this index number 3 you want to get this sum so subtract this to 23 and 15 so you will get 8 which is for index 3 and again when you go to the next index which is the last index of the array then for this you want the sum between these three items so you take 26 and subtract this 16 from it and that will make it 10 okay so this will be your resultant array and you know that when k value is equals to 0 then we need to return an resultant array of size n where all the values are set to 0 so we have covered all these cases now if you uh, calculate the time complexity then we are pre-computing the entire prefix sum which is of 2n size and so this can be considered order of n and after that we are iterating for a size n and each of the queries served in order of one time using this formulation and therefore uh, the time complexity is order of n the space complexity for the prefix sum array is order of n therefore the time complexity and space complexity are both order of n let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given the uh, encoded code and the k value and we need to decrypt it so if the k value is zero you know that i just have to return a array of size n filled with all the zeros according to condition otherwise i'll be building the prefix sum array which is of size 2n and this is the building process after having built this i will take the resultant array and try to calculate the result using the prefix sum array so this is the call to calculating the sum for the result array here i will be checking what is the value of k if it is greater than 0 then that means i will start at 0 and go till index n minus 1 okay and always calculate the prefix sum on the right hand side Otherwise, if k was less than 0, then I will be making the negative value positive and I will start at index n and go till index 2 and minus 1 and always look at the sum on the left hand side. And after filling the resultant array, I will be returning it as an answer. So this is the entire code and I hope you were able to understand it. If you still have any doubt, then feel free to comment below and I'll try to help you as soon as possible. Like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.